Okay, so we were in the chapter on diagonalization, and we just looked at this first example, and now we're going to go on to actual some actual stuff, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so we're going to have to, before we actually get to diagonalizing stuff, we're going to need to do eigenvalues and eigenvectors, more stuff about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, then we can actually do the diagonalization, then we can use the diagonalization. That's, I think that's how the chapter's going to go. Okay, so it's on page 60, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. Uh, let A be an n by n matrix. Okay, so a square matrix. We call lambda, um, not and, n. We call lambda an eigenvalue of A. If we can find a non-zero vector V, so that A times V equals lambda times V, we call V the eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. Okay. Um, so eigenvectors are non-zero vectors that when you multiply them by the matrix, you just get a scalar multiple of the vector, and that scalar, the actual scalar is then called the eigenvalue for the eigenvector. The sort of picture you could, should have in your mind is if a vector can be thought of as an arrow, right? Well, then a transformation is or an arrow from the origin of the vector. A transformation, so this is, a, this is maybe the matrix, the vector W, so I'd rather use u, then a transformation will change these vectors to different vectors. So it might take a might take u to a u over here, right? Okay. But if a vector is an eigenvector for a, then when you have uh, the vector v, the eigenvector for a, when you apply when you apply a, the result is a scalar multiple of v. So it's pointing in the same direction, or maybe the opposite direction of the scale is negative. So something like that. Like that point in the same direction. So, oh, so that's v pointing that way. Now this longer one is a v, right? Which is actually just equal to lambda v, a scalar multiple of v. So it's pointing in the same direction. So if you think of if you think of this picture, an eigenvector is that sp an eigenvector for a transformation a. So you first. So, yeah, for an eigenvector for a, a transformation A or for a matrix A is a special vector whose direction isn't changed by the transformation. It's just scaled. It's just made longer or shorter or maybe pointing in the opposite direction, you know, because it could, could be pointing in that direction if lambda was a negative number, which is completely possible. Okay. Um, and then note that it says non-zero vector, right? So an eigenvector is non-zero. Why is that? Because if we, if we allowed eigenvectors to be zero, then zero would be an eigenvector of every matrix, which would be irritating. So, you know, if you have the zero vector, right, apply the, the linear transformation A to it, you get the zero vector, right? So that's equal to zero times the zero vector. Okay, but that's a really silly situation, okay? If this would, then you'd have zero being the eigenvector with eigenvalue zero of every eigenvector of every matrix, of every linear transformation, which would not be interesting. So that's why we say that the eigenvector is non-zero. However, notice that we do not say that the eigenvalue needs to be non-zero. The eigenvalue could be zero. So you can have a situation like this. You can have a situation where you have um, a, an eigenvector, so suppose V is the eigenvector, and then you apply the transformation A to it, so maybe this is this u is not an eigenvector, so that u maybe gets sent by a to this a u here, right? But the a v is just a zero vector, okay? A v equals zero times v, right? So here the eigenvalue is zero, right? And th so this equation, it's, it's like that. All that's happening is that the lambda is zero, but the v is not zero. So the lambda can be zero. Okay, so when we say that you can think of it in your head as it's like an eigenvector is a special ve a vector that's special for the transformation because it's not, doesn't directly, doesn't change, it's just scaled by a scalar. That scalar can be zero, uh, but the eigenvector can't be zero. Okay, we will see later 
that a matrix is diagonalizable if it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So it's an n by n matrix, so if it has as many linearly independent eigenvectors as it has columns, then it's diagonalizable. The matrix P that diagonalizes A is a matrix whose columns are the n independent eigenvectors. Okay, so you make, the, you make P out of the column, the columns of P are going to be the different eigenvectors, and P will be invertible. Right? Remember when we diagonalized, we were like, oh, P is invertible because its columns are independent, but now we can see that the columns are independent because those columns are the independent eigenvectors. And furthermore, when we did this, whole, did this uh, little example, these things here, those are the columns of P, those are actually the eigenvectors. Okay? Uh, where were we? Okay. And the resulting diagonal matrix D has the corresponding eigenvalues as its diagonal entries. Okay, so in this example we did, um, in D we had 1 and minus 3, those are the eigenvalues. And look, they go here. Here's the 1 in front of the T, here's the minus 3 in front of the T there. These eigenvalues are with their eigenvectors. That's, that's why how you can, once you've worked out the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, you don't have to go through this whole process each time. You can just write down the solution like that in terms of the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Okay. Uh, where are we now? Um, anyway, but for now, we're not concerned with that stuff. We're concerned with the calculation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So how are we actually going to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Okay. So the eigenvalues of a matrix are the roots of its characteristic polynomial. Okay. Equivalently, they are the values that satisfy its characteristic equation. Okay. So what that... So... Never mind this for now. Here's the eigenvalue, eigenvector equation, right? This is the definition of V being an eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda. Now, write, write this. Okay, bring the lambda V to the other side. So you're going to have A times V minus lambda V equals zero. Okay, now what, do you want, what you want to do now is you want to factorize out the V. If these were numbers, you'd factorize out the V, right? You'd go like this, okay? But you can't do that because this is a matrix, an n, a square n by n matrix, but this is just, it's just a number, lambda. You can't subtract a number from a matrix. So this step is invalid. But what you can do is you can stick an i identity matrix in here, right? You can stick the identity matrix in wherever you want because it's just identity. It doesn't change things, you know? i times v equals v. So you can check, stick in iv for v. Okay, so you do that, right? Now, now you can factorize out the V because now you have A minus lambda I and that identity matrix is an n by n matrix so lambda I is also an n by n matrix so now you have a matrix minus a matrix of the same size so, that's valid, so it's valid. Okay, so this little trick allows you to, to, allows you to factorize out the V. Okay, now we want, okay, So we have a minus lambda iv equals zero. Now, eigenvectors are non-zero, right? So we want this equation to have a non-zero solution for v, right? When does this equation have a non-zero solution? Well, remember from the linear algebra chapter, from, from the stuff about determinants, this equation has a non-zero solution precisely when that it, when this matrix is not invertible. Because if this matrix was invertible, you can multiply both sides by this whole matrix, A minus lambda I, and you get V equals the zero matrix, equals the inverse times the zero matrix, which is just, sorry, the zero vector, which is just the zero vector. So we want this matrix to not be invertible, right? We want, we want the lambda to be such that if the lambda is an eigenvalue, it must make this matrix not invertible. When is the matrix, this matrix, not invertible? Of course, when its determinant is zero, right? When the determinant is zero, then your matrix is not invertible. So what we want is we want to choose lambdas such that this is, the determinant is equal to zero. Now this thing, this determinant of this, is a characteristic polynomial. It's a polynomial, why? Because when you actually calculate the determinants, right? You know, sorry, we, you're going to see just now, but you calculate the determinant by... Um, you calculate the determinant by, you know, you go down a row, you go down a row, across a row, and you multiply by cofactors and stuff, okay? When you do that, you get factors of lambda, right? And the highest factor of lambda you can get, so you have, because you have, you have lambdas on the diagonal of this matrix, because the lambda i 
is just as lambda is on the diagonal, and then here's the, the a is just constants. And the highest factor of lambda you can possibly get is lambda to the n. If the matrix A is n by n, the highest factor you can get is lambda n. You can also get factors lambda n, n minus 1, and so on. So it's a polynomial in lambda. So a polynomial in lambda, that, that's called the characteristic of polynomial. And the characteristic equation is this, is setting that polynomial to 0 equals to 0. And the roots of that, i.e. that things that the lambda values for lambda that make this determinant equal to 0, that make this matrix not invertible, that give you non-zero eigenvectors, those lambdas are the eigenvalues. Okay. How many eigenvalues will there be? Well, there must be, it's a polynomial of, with, of order n, so there must be n eigenvalues. But they might be complex. Okay, so the n complex eigenvalues. And I think I will leave, start this example, of actually finding some eigenvalues in the next video. Okay.